Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our NFL Week 6 preview between the Carolina Panthers and the Minnesota Vikings. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Panthers. The Panthers could be sitting at 4-0 this year if they did the little things on offense such as catching the football, protecting the football, identifying and adjusting to different stunts and blitzes. Now versus Minnesota, look for the offense to attack vertically down the field versus the Vikings defense. That for the most part plays a lot of too deep, but they also like to rob the middle of the field, so Cam Newton will have to be alert in the passing game. The Panthers are one of the best defensive teams in the league, and they're doing it on both ends. Seventh versus the run and eighth versus the pass, and they also are third in points allowed. This week poses a huge challenge to those run defense numbers as they face Adrian Peterson, and the way to slow him down is tailor-made for what the Panthers do exceptionally well, which is gang tackling. And it's even more important this week as it would keep Minnesota in second and long and third and long situations, and that's a win for the Panthers' defense. Now let's move over to Minnesota in this ballgame, and the Vikings signed Josh Freeman, who was released from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and although he's a better football player than both Castle and Ponder, Castle will get the start this week versus the Carolina Panthers, and to his credit, he's coming off a great game versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. That offense looked a lot better when there is balance, and it showed a couple of weeks ago in London. Now this week, if Castle can get off to a great start and in a rhythm, the Vikings definitely have the passing weapons to cause damage to any secondary. On the defensive side of the football, Cam Newton is a lot like Ben Roethlisberger, so playing a contained style defense versus another struggling offensive line could put you in position to have some success this week as well. Now, the question and a concern will be on the back end where the Vikings are still giving up big plays in the passing game. They're really going to have to get better play from the corners this week, more so than the safeties versus Carolina. The Carolina Panthers can put the Minnesota Vikings in a sticky situation versus the pass by running four verticals, essentially putting the safeties in a two-on-one situation. And where we're going to run here is the sluggle wheel, utilizing the tight end on the wheel route and also getting creative with the personnel. We're going to put Kenyon Barner, who's now healthy in the backfield. You want to get him isolated as well on a safety. And now we're going to put the tight end Greg Olson here. And we have LaFell, Ginn, whoever you want to put outside of Olson, and Steve Smith on the, on the uh, weak side. And we're going to run verticals on this guy here. Now, off of the play action fake. Got to fake the running play. That holds the linebackers. It also allows the play to develop. We're running the sluggle wheel strong side. So as we're faking, Keon Barnett is running a streak on the safety. This safety has a problem. Now, do you get over top of Steve Smith or do you run with a running back who has the great ability to catch the football out of the backfield? And we also have D'Angelo Williams blocking here. Cam Newton face the handoff, doesn't have the rollout. Why? Because we have the slant up, putting the safety once again in the bind, and the tight end running the wheel. So you have four verticals essentially because you have two on one, two on one. Cam Newton has easy pickings to find out where he wants to go with the football. Tight end is probably going to be open down the sideline because of the way the natural rub is with the sluggle. And you want to protect the middle of the field with the guy that's going up the field down the hash. So I think this will be one huge play for Carolina if they're able to work it into their offense this week versus the Minnesota Vikings. The Minnesota Vikings love to run the power play. And what the power play is, is when you have two offensive linemen, either two guards or a guard and a tackle or even a guard and a fullback heading play side to, to the point of attack to run the football. And the Vikings love to run that, and they run it successfully. This week versus the Carolina Panthers, they're facing a defense that loves to stunt with their defensive line and also stunt with their linebackers. So here's how they can free AP and block it up up front. So let's say they run in the power play. We're going to pull both guards. So work up. We're going to have the backside guard pulling. So we have the center blocked down on his defensive tackle. This guard is pulling around. But let's say Carolina wants to stunt this defense tackle and jump him inside. He has to abandon his responsibilities and block this guy. Otherwise, he's going to blow it up in the backfield. So he's going to wash this guy down, block him. So that takes away one pulling guard away. So what that tells the play side tackle, now I have to work up to the second level. I have to block the weak side backer who's going to be flowing to the football. Also tells the tight end, I have to block the middle backer. So now you have two blockers and you still have two blockers on offense that can get the job done. So what you want to happen now, you want the fullback to lead up in the hole to take out the linebacker because we have the backside guard pulling to kick out this defensive end running AP to daylight here. So you protect yourself versus a stunning defensive tackle. But let's say, let's erase this. Let's say Carolina wants to bring the strong side linebacker to disrupt this power play. 
how can we block it up out the same formation? Same rules apply. It's all about communication and it's all about some players abandoning responsibility and getting the job done in a running game. And here's what we can do. So we're still backside protecting. We're gonna block down with the center and guard now. Block, I'm sorry, block down with the center. And we're gonna have the play side guard and play side tackle comboing. So if this guy is coming, we're gonna combo block to the middle backer. We're also gonna have this tight end work up to block the backer right there, as well as the pulling guard. So you have the guard and the tight end on the outside linebacker. We're gonna ask the fullback then to kick out the defensive end, so that way AP runs to daylight. So versus a stunning defensive tackle, you saw how the guard had to abandon his responsibility, and now versus a stunning linebacker, the tight end has to abandon his responsibility, and also the fullback, so now he's kicking out the, the defensive end. The guard's leading the round, so you have the guard and the tight end blocking a backer. That's an ideal situation that you want. You want them to stunt that linebacker on the strong side. Either way, AP will be running the daylight if they're able to communicate up front and still running their power play. The X Factor for the Panthers will be their safeties. Not only do they have to be effective in run support, that extra guy in the box, that alley defender, but in the passing game, they can't get so focused on stopping the run that they disregard their responsibilities in pass coverage. Otherwise, big plays can happen in the passing game. The X Factor for the Vikings will be their receiving core. I believe they have some opportunities this week versus a Panthers secondary, especially in the slot. If they can take advantage early, the Vikings can achieve that balance like they'd had two weeks ago in London. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game for Carolina. I would keep it skinny in the passing game. That's your skinny post, your slant. I think they can have big plays in the passing game if they keep it skinny. And in the running game department, the wham is your friend. I think they can have some huge plays on the ground with D'Angelo Williams hitting it quick in the hole with the wham play. You want to wham those defensive tackles of the Vikings. And on defense, 11 guys to the football is going to take a team effort to slow down a running game and make the Vikings offense one-dimensional. And for the Vikings in this ballgame, in order to get pressure on Cam Newton, I would send that nickel defender to force a quick throw, to force a bad decision, and that way you can come up either with a stop or a turnover. And Matt Castle has to have an encore performance. That brings that balance, and it makes life easier for Adrian Peterson to run the football. You have to find ways to get Cordero Patterson worked into the offense. He's a dynamic playmaker. He's a touchdown waiting to happen. Find ways to get him on the field and contribute offensively. I like the Panthers in this ball game. I think they have the defensive front seven to slow down what Adrian Peterson brings to the table in the running game, thus putting it all on Matt Castle, and then they'll be able to get pressure off the edge with Johnson and Hardy. So I like the Panthers to win this game with their defense, and on offense, they do have the ultimate X factor in Cam Newton. I think he'll have a bounce back game versus Minnesota. And I also want to give a huge shout out to Panther fan forums and Viking fan forums for always showing football game plan support.